Assalamu alaikum, I am Asad Yusuf and welcome to MPT channel. Today we're going to discuss multi-leaf collimator, MLC. So these are the contents of my presentation. The multi-leaf collimator consists of large number of collimating blocks or leaves that can be driven automatically independent of each other to generate a field of any shape. It permits the quick and flexible adjustment of irradiation field of the tumor shape and the shape of the organ at risk. MLCs are changing from simple beam shaping device to both spatial and temporal radiation beam. Modifier for intensity modulation radiation therapy. So the characteristics of MLC. These are the consideration during the design of the MLC, the physical and the geometrical properties, the mechanical properties. Another aspect is dosimetry aspect, which includes transmission, round leaf, age, tongue and groove effect, penumbra. So we'll talk about this thing in detail. So the maximum field size, the leaf width, height, length, number of leaf, leaf motion, and configuration of MLCs, these are included in geometrical and mechanical properties as per TG50 definition. Optimum leaf width, higher spatial resolution, the better the quality of resulting dose distribution. In principle, there are some physical constraints. For MLC, with the penumbra T equals to distance between the 20% and the 80% of isodose produced by the leaf edge. A leaf width finer than P divided by 2 does not lead to the further improvement in the dose distribution. Accessory MLC type width range is 1.5 mm to 4 mm. Integrated MLC types width range about 5 mm to 10 mm. So the width of 5 mm is a good compromise. Mechanical properties, leaf motion, maximum over leaf travel from the isocenter, how much the leaf can over travel. This is the maximum leaf over travel. Leaf abutment, the leaf at the uh, uh, the point where the leaf cannot touch together, the, 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 there is a space between the two leaves so that they will not damage. Interdigestion, that is moving all over uh, like this situation is uh, digestion. The first, uh, the opposite bank leaf move over the uh, another bank leaf. And these are the some other constants. Here you can see minimum width gap. And we'll talk about this, uh, why we acquired this gap. No integration of leaf motion. That's a limitation of some of the MLC systems. And uh, this is the maximum distance that can pass the one of the MLC as compared to other MLC. So the leaf span, maximum distance from the tip of the most retracted leaf to the tip of the most extended leaf. 15 centimeter for the millennium MLC defines the maximum width of subfield which can be delivered without the carriage movement. For the Electa, it's 12 cm, and uh, for the Simmons, it's 10 cm. It's 12 cm for the Electa and 10 cm for the Simmons. And this is a visual way to show you how it's moving. So that once we move uh, across the isocenter, then the carriage will come for the millennium MLC. So the dosimetric aspects of MLC design. Transmission, leaf transmission, interleaf transmission, leaf end transmission, radiation leakage, focusing property, penumbra, effects of round leaf edge. So the transmission, as per TG50, for upper and lower jaw replacement MLC, like in Electra and Simmons, the transmission require the same as for standard collimator. For the tertiary MLC, transmission requirement are the same as for custom blocks. However, the leaf thickness should be provide adequate attenuation to compensate the frontier leaf transmission. For the elector, the, it is the replacement of the upper jaw, so the MLC size is quite smaller because it's closer to the isocenter, whereas compared to the tertiary MLC system. The transmission through the MLC may be determined by the measuring dose per mu in a phantom, with the MLC closed and dividing it by dose per mu measured with the MLC open. It's seen that MLC transmission varies between 1.7% at a mid-leaf to 2.7% between the leaves. 
This is a visual diagram. Reduction of the dose through the full height of the leaf. So this is a leaf transmission. Interleaf means in between the leaves. And leaf end transmission is uh, shown in this diagram. Focusing property. The edge of the leaves always directed toward the source, independent of the leaf position. This property is called focusing. So there are two uh, types, single focusing and double focusing. And these are the some uh, designs of the MLCs. Some of them are ideal and some are practically available. Double focused. Rational behind the double focus MLC is to provide the sharp beam cutoff at the edge. For high energy beam, this objective is achieved only to a limited extent because the dose fall off at the edge is largely determined by the scatter photons and electrons. As the double focus MLCs are difficult to manufacture, some system have been designed with a rounded leaf edge. So uh, the older uh, machine like Simmons uh, have double focus MLCs and now they are abundant. And this is a round leaf field edge and the left hand variant follow this uh, shapes. The purpose of the round edge is to provide the constant beam transmission through the leaf edge, regardless of the position in the field, here you can see. So life field versus the radiation field. From the isocenter, uh, from the source, here you can see the life field projection on the surface, whereas the radiation field when you take the flim, uh, when you take the image on the flim or on the portal dosimetry. So the light field underestimate the radiation field by 0.5 or 1.2 millimeter per site. The purpose of the round edge is to provide the constant beam transmission, as I said. The perimeter width is a function of leaf position. So the evolution of the round leaf. The perimeter at any position is within one to three mm. Penumbra depends on the position of the collimator. So physical penumbra with the MLC is larger than that produced by the collimator jaw or the cerebral block. Also the jagness of the field edge make it difficult now. So there is a bit disadvantage of the MLCs as compared to cerebral block. Leaf motion. The rectilinear leaf motion and the round field edge in the combination introduce a non-linear dependence of the field size on the leaf position. As the leaf is retracted away or extended across on the central axis, the field defining point on the rounded edge is no longer the center of the leaf, but move away or toward the source. In either case, the resulting field size is slightly smaller than that predicted by the linear change in the leaf position. Variant provide a generic correction file to compensate for the nonlinear dependence of field size of the leaf position. In this way, the digital readout is linked to the light and the radiation field and not the physical displacement of the leaves. Since the MLCs are precisely machined, the parameter and the file are common to all variant MLC and should not require adjustment. A second file, the positioning calibration file, allows the user to compensate for the misalignment between the MLC and the central axis. This is performed by adjusting the four parameters. And you can look into the uh, literature for the more details. Now, uh, most important part of the dosimetric of MLC is the dosimetric leaf cap. The correction for the round leaf edge handled as an apparent gap between the two closed leaves. And the literature is available. Uh, this is how it explains the round leaf. The radiation field crossed the MLCs on both sides, and in the middle, there is a radiation part, and this is a scatter. So this is a dosimetric leaf gap. And these are the files. Uh, the files are provided by the variants. You have to run those files uh, in an appropriate way. The, uh, the description is also given with the guideline, and uh, you can find out the DLG. Tongue and groove effect. So you can uh, easily understand what is a tongue and groove. This is what the shape is. Uh, if you don't make in the way of tongue and groove, then obviously the interleaf transmission will increase. And this is the way you can decrease the transmission. One of the side leaf protrudes and outward, that's called tongue. So this is a tongue and this is a groove. So the central part of the adjacent leaf fit like a jigsaw puzzle. This overlap of the leaf reduces the extent of the radiation leakage through the interleaf gap. This is called tongue and groove effect. 
give rise to the higher radiation leakage. It's about 2.5 to 2.7. And this is how uh, dosimetric uh, images show the effect of this effect. So this is a configuration of lecta, and you can see the leaf, the upper jaw replacement, and this is the lower jaw, the wide backup diaphragm. This is uh, the upper jaw is there, and the lower jaws are the MLCs, and you can see these are the double lens focus. So they are following the diversion of the beam. This is the seven MLCs, and these are the tertiary uh, MLC system of varium. You can see the jaws and the MLCs are independent of the jaw. And these are the right two machines are on the machine uh, on the market. And this is a TG50 picture. Uh, to uh, show the distance from the isocenter, from the source. So uh, now a little talk about the agility complication. This is a new system of Electra, um, and it has 160 MLCs, and all are 5 mm across. And this uh, uh, reduce the this increase the capabilities of the MLCs to move. Uh, from one end to another end. And uh, the things which we have talked in the previous slide that uh, cross size center can move to the 12 CCM. Now there is no limitation of that and it can cross to the end of the other side. So this is uh, the new system of agility. And uh, with the dynamic leaf guide, the MLC effectively speed is 6.5 centimeter per second. These are the variant uh, specifications. And uh, MLC, uh, Varian provide a Millennium MLC and HD 120 MLC. Um, so the central MLC size is smaller as compared to Millennium MLC. And this are uh, recommendation for the SRS and SBRT. Minimum leaf thickness. So this is a comparison of uh, 120 Millennium MLC and HD MLC. And uh, this is a planning comparison has shown that how finer the dose distribution we will get with the HDMLC. So the quality assurance, alignment of mechanical and optical axis, leaf position calibration, leaf travel characteristics as a function of collimeter and gantry position, transmission characteristics, field shaping software data transfer and reproduction of the standard shapes. And this can be done with the patient specific way of doing with the idle portal dosimetry, or you can use Octavius or any other system that you have. Dosimetric comparison with treatment planning system. And these are the some uh, test pictures of leaf position, tongue and groove effects, alignment of the MLC. This is, uh, you can set the MLC in this way and take the image and you can see the gap and uh, make circular field. And these are the tests we usually performed. Uh, this is the MLC transmission into leaf tra abutment and uh, into leaf transmission, averting and the leaf into leaf transmission. And these are the results. This is the picket fence stance and uh, it is done with all the gantry angles. So the gravity effect also introduced of testing the MLCs. Uh, dynamic MLC dose versus gantry angle and these are the files provided by the Varium and can you run those files or you can make your own plan if you like. Uh, pick a fence, again, as it's a dynamic MLC and uh, arc leaf speed, dose rate test. And other leaf speed, dose rate test. And uh, these are the TL DLG tests. And uh, this is the way we do transmission bank A, transmission bank B and the open field and the take average, use this formula. And uh, then there are the files of DLG for uh, energies and you have to run those energies. And these are the values of DLG and you can compare these values with the literature. And uh, also you can um, testify it with your plan and planning system. These are you have to put on the Eclipse or you know, on a Monaco if you have. So, Thank you for the listening. And uh, this is a task that you can make with the structure of the MLCs.
Thank you. Uh, subscribe, like, and share this video with your colleagues. Thank you very much.